Hello, my name is Jingo Nelly and I'm going to be taking you through the concept of time value of money. And before I begin, I'm going to require you to subscribe, uh, like and leave a comment probably after this video. So with the concept of time value of money, this is a concept that a rational economic unit that is individual investors or a firm. With rational, it means somebody who is indifferent. So, uh, we'll prefer earlier cash inflows than later given a choice. Now, with this, it looks at uh, the preference of certain amounts now to the same amount at a certain to a, to the same amount at a future date. That is to say, money now is better than the same amount tomorrow, and uh, these are the reasons for the time preference of money. A uh, reason one, uh, because of the uncertainty and the risk. Uh, so, generally, the future is associated with the risk and uncertainty because of changes in the business environment. Uh, moving on to point two, preference for consumption. So, any rational consumer, so here, rational means somebody who is indifferent. Any rational consumer prefers consumption, uh, pre prefers current consumption to future consumption. So, moving on to the next, we are having the inflationary tendency so an inflationary economy the money received today has more purchasing power than the money to be received in the future then for investment opportunities the amount of money received earlier can be invested to earn more return in the future so after me knowing all that i come to importance of the knowledge of the time value of money so with this uh importance in the investment decision so there is need to determine whether the future benefits are sufficiently large to satisfy current outlays so with this uh this with adjusting future cash flows reflect what these values are worth at present then moving on uh in the financing decision the interest as a return to the lender and the cost of capital to the borrower is vital in making decisions of whether to source uh of, of where to source funds so that is to do with the uh, financing decision so looking at the in the investment decision the investors would prefer their money to be reinvested only if they are assured that it would plug back more returns over and above the risk free rate of return then uh, looking at the working capital decisions, uh, they are made with the short term in mind and its policies aim at managing the current assets and the short term financing. So the decision criteria that focuses on interest rates on interest rates and they are require and, and these requires the knowledge of time value of money. That is to do with the working capital decision. So this is uh then it it brings me to the future and the present value. So with the future and the present values, uh they are determined using the car uh, the compounding or discounting techniques respectively. So for the future, I'm going to use compounding techniques, and for the present, I'm going to use discounting techniques. So with the future value, this refers to the value of the current cash flows at some time in future after compounding using an appropriate compound rate now what do i mean by compounding compounding therefore refers to the technique used in determining the future value of the present cash flow using an appropriate compound rate so uh, we are to determine the future value of the of a lump sum cash flow series of a uh, series of uniform cash flows or series of uneven cash flows using time value of money concept so um, we are having the future value of a lump sum cash flow. And with this, what do they mean by a lump sum? A lump sum is a single payment made at a particular time. Or a lump sum is a single complete sum of money. And with this, this is the formula of finding the future value. It's going to be future value is equal to the present value. One, uh, brackets 1 plus R uh, brackets to the power N. So this is what I've done. To show their meanings then uh, from there from that formula the fv is going to be our compound value and uh, the one plus r to the power n is going to be our compound factor then from there r is going to be our compound rate 
So from all that, I'm going to give you an example. But from this example, all you need is to ex extract out the vital information. So they're saying, Kara received 1 million and wishes to deposit in to deposit it in a fixed deposit in a commercial bank that offers an interest rate of 8 per 8 8 per annum how much will she have by the end of year two if the money is left intact now with this you extract out the vital information uh, the one million is going to be your your pv the eight percent is going to be your ara so with this i'm going to first work out for the eight percent whereby i'm going to say eight percent is equal to eight out of 100 which is going to be which is going to give me 0 0.08 so after getting this that's when i can drop it to the R. Then I'm going to say my future value is equal to 1 million brackets 1 plus 0 0.8 to the power 2. Uh, 1 million brackets 1. I add this 1 plus 0 0.8 to the power 2. Then I work out this. I get this amount. And I say 1 million times the 1.1664. And I'll get my answer as this. So my future value is going to be 1 million 166,400. Um, uh, so therefore, I'll say therefore, Kara will have this amount by the end of year two. So what have I done here in this formula? What I have done is, uh, we have compounded the one million that Kara received at a future value of one million one hundred sixty-six thousand four hundred using a compounding rate. That's what we have done from here. So from there, uh, you now know how to find the future value of a lump sum. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. Thank you so much for watching.